Hello everybody, this is Kelly Grabowski with The Roast here at Cabin Coffee Del Tuna. I have a special guest today, Joel Jacobson, and I'm excited to bring you on, Joel. You know, I didn't know you before, you're a big part of this community, and um, I've been to your hardware stores, I've been to your meat markets, and little did I know, we had so much in common as small business owners here in the Chippewa Valley. So, um, thank you, welcome. And now tell us about you. You're from Chippewa Falls and you grew up in this area. Tell us kind of about you. Yeah, good morning. Thanks for having me on, Kelly. Um, yes, our first conversation was very good. Uh, I think I told all of our managers I met another uh, good business owner that's just like us. So um, yeah, I, I uh, lived here my whole life. Uh, grew up in Chippewa Falls, uh, worked for a local grocery store, Gordy's um, IGA at the time. Uh, turned into Gordy's Markets at the end. Um, had a great career there, learned a lot of things. And um, when it was time to move on, the hardware stores were available. And uh, so was the meat market in uh, Lafayette. So I decided to jump into those things. I'd never been in the hardware business before, but it was retail. And um, thankfully some really good employees stayed with us and some new ones joined us. And uh, it's been a good, good ride ever since. Very nice. <laughs> so, what do you have going on now? Any any upcoming plans or exciting changes in your world? Yeah, so we actually do. Um, the biggest change right now is we're moving our that same Lafayette meat market that we purchased seven years ago. We're moving it just down the road uh, next to our hardware store on Lake Wissota. Um, I think a lot of people know we have the uh, meat market on Claremont Avenue, which is right next to our hardware store. It works out pretty well for people. Um, so w we had an opportunity to get into this new space and uh, we jumped at it. So we're, we needed to do an upgrade to our equipment anyway. Um, and then we are a, a state state of Wisconsin wholesale facility. So our products uh, are available here locally at um, Woodman's and Festival Foods and Hy-Vee, um, as well as our own hardware stores and, and, and a few others, <clears throat> excuse me. So we needed to, um, to be able to continue that, we wanted to upgrade our equipment and upgrade our production area. So it was just the timing all kind of came together and it's great. and um, I think it was four years ago uh, now, we started an ice cream shop uh, at the Lake Wissota place and uh, a wonderful man named Hunter Custer now uh, leases that and runs that business for himself. And um, he's actually moving, we just announced yesterday, he's moving into a space right next to us. Very so nice. he'll be a great neighbor. Um, we'll work together really well and uh, it's exciting for the Lafayette and Chippewa Falls area to have everything all there, um, uh, all under one roof. Yeah, it's like one-stop shopping. You yeah. guys got everything there. Get a little meat snack, get a little ice cream. Yeah, yeah. That would be great. Absolutely. You know, I love your meat. I had no idea what a process it is to own a meat store, especially a state-run meat store. You were telling me this. I was blown away about all the things that you have to do. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so I think it was four years ago, uh, same timing, we decided to become a state of Wisconsin approved uh, wholesale facility, meaning that we can sell our products in other areas. So that invites a whole bunch of new regulations, rules, procedures. Um, I tell people all the time that the, the United States food supply is very safe um, and it's for these reasons, but uh, we do get inspected every single day. Uh, there's an inspector on site watching what we're doing, checking what we're doing. We have to have uh, what's called a HACCP plan uh, for food safety that we have to follow. Um, it, it, the biggest thing I like to explain to people is um, when we test a new item, and uh, I know I was telling you about this, I was telling uh, your husband Joe about this. Um, for example, uh, t two weeks ago we came out with a taco brat, and that's something that one of our retailers had asked us to develop and, and bring into their store. So when we do it, we, we have to get everything approved. It has to go down to Madison, all of our procedures, all of our formulas, all of our allergens that may be in it. And that's a that's a process. So we'll put it out in Chippewa and then everyone in Eau Claire wants to know, why can't we get it in Eau Claire? And uh, it's always a great conversation with people because it's, it, it's anywhere from two weeks to it's been up to 12 weeks at times for us to get things approved to be able to wow. do that. Um, so we've learned over the last uh, couple of winters that we do a lot of our product development in the winter time when it's obviously a little bit slower um, with people not grilling quite as much. So we're working on that right now. It's it's exciting. It's fun. Um, it's not a bad thing to go through the process. The state's a very good partner of ours. Um, we don't mind that they're there every single day. I know a lot of people think that's a bad thing, but it, it's not. We have good inspectors and it's always good for us to learn about the newest ways to 
uh, produce things safely and the newest way to label things safely. So it's not a bad thing at all. Well, it makes me feel good as a consumer. I'll tell you that. Like, I mean, that's, I had no idea the process that goes into that. Um, and for everybody that has great ideas about meat, I guess, or flavors, note to self, approach Joel <laughs> in the early part of winter if you really want to spend summer with grilling and out there on the lake with some meat snacks and other products. <laughs> yep, yep, absolutely. Uh, if he's listening, he'll know who it is, but I have a good friend of mine that wants a, a bourbon brat. Oh. Uh, and we, we've been developing that for a couple of winters now and haven't been able to quite get it right, but I think we're... We're really close to announcing something cool here. Well, speaking of bourbon, you were also telling me a story about this bourbon society, and that seems like a lot of fun. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, there's a there's a Facebook group. If, if anybody's out there that would like to follow uh, their Facebook group, um, or ours or yours, Kelly, um, it's called the Chippewa Valley Bourbon Society, and uh, we sell bourbon in our store, and um, we really got heavy into it this year, and uh, just struck up a relationship with with these uh, fine people that run the site and then along with all the people that follow them it's such a great community they're they're bourbon hunters they're bourbon enthusiasts um they have events and, and we we have a great relationship with our supplier so we were able to get a couple of what is called barrel picks so you get samples shipped up to you from kentucky and you get to try them and decide which one you would like to to have and there's a big process that the Bourbon Society actually helped us with. Um, big shout out to um, Andy and Kurt and James. They they put on a, we just had one on Monday night. They put on a nice presentation about how you pick up the notes and the different flavors mm. and the different smells. And they brought glasses for us to use these Glencairn glasses. And it, it was great. And um, what we wanted to do was something a little bit different that's not done in the market is we wanted to allow our customers to pick the barrel. They're the ones that are hopefully going to purchase the bourbon from us once it comes. It's a, it'll, it'll be here. Uh, we're hoping at the end of May, early June. Um, so we, we had a, a little Facebook contest and had a lot of entries and okay. uh, seven great people got chosen to come and do it. And uh, it was a ton of fun. We just did it this last Monday night and I learned a lot. I didn't taste because I don't have a strong enough, you know, palate, I guess you'll call it for it. But um, these guys, they were wonderful. They're mm -hmm. super nice people. And uh, right, now, right now, just the type of people that they are, they have a, a bottle of very rare bourbon that they got donated to their group. And they're, they used it the last two days to raise. The last I looked, so this might not be the last number, but it was over $600 oh, wow. uh, for charity. And they're mm -hmm. going to use it to pay off school lunch accounts in Eau Claire. So oh, that's great. very nice group to be affiliated with. Yeah, absolutely. And I love how... Uh, you know, we, we try to focus on the community and you're so community based and so community focused. You know, you're, you're getting feedback from customers about different products that they want to see. You're, you're entertaining the idea of letting customers be involved with taste testing and, and product selection. Like, <clears throat> you know, to me, I just think that's so special and unique about this Chippewa Valley and how great of a community we have and how we come together to do these things. Um, I, I think that's pretty remarkable. You know, you've had a lot of success in the community. What would you contribute, you know, besides great customers, of course, you know, what would you contribute your success to? Well, I think um, back to something you said earlier, the Chippewa Valley is a great place to live and work. And people say it all the time. Um, I, I, I'm fortunate enough to speak to outside vendors or outside ACE owners that they, they simply just don't get it. And, and you hear about that all the time mm -hmm. around here. And I never knew what it meant until probably a few years ago where they, they just don't understand how it all comes together here. But yeah. I think uh, I can attribute our success to our staff. Um, even even right here, right now, I'm able to be here doing this because we have great staff members at our stores. Um, they, they are in tune with what's going on in Chippewa Falls, Eau Claire, Rice Lake, Spooner, all of our communities. Mm -hmm. um, they they are able to make decisions to donate to certain groups or do certain things and beyond just being coming in and being asked because we get asked a, a lot of course um, which is fine but beyond that they see different needs that maybe we didn't get asked about uh, to step up and help certain things i can't tell you how many late night phone calls i've had from uh, staff members that said hey we need to get involved here or we need to do this so it's not just me mm -hmm. um, i think it's our wonderful culture and the great people that we have yeah. um, that work for us. And we have a lot of fun doing what we do. Um, if you came into the back room at the, at the meat market, I think it, uh, some days you'd not get any work done because you're laughing so hard. <laughs> and uh, 
other days there's debates about the Green Bay Packers that I, I have to put a stop to because they're getting a little <laughs> too loud back there. So um, it's a great time. The hardware staff, again, that's where, you know, we really appreciate stepping up when, when needed um, snowstorms and other, you know, different things that happen. Yeah. Um, and it's fun. But we have a great staff. Um, we're, we're a small company. We want to stay that way with our staff and our stores. Um, we have, you know, just the old school stuff, right? We do potluck lunches once in a while and we do Christmas parties and yeah. all the things. And it, it's a good time. That's awesome. That's how we feel about our staff. I mean, I am so blessed to have an amazing staff here at Cabin Coffee. I always tell people, they, they ask me, don't you have staffing issues or is it hard to find employees? And honestly, we don't. Unfortunately, we have to turn more people away than we can hire. Um, but I have such a good crew and it, it makes all the difference in the world when, and it really almost feels like a family. It does. It, yeah. it 100% does. Yep, for sure. And it, that's a good thing. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's great. Um, it, so we could talk about um, um, excuse me our hardware stores. I guess um, you know when we were able to grow into the into the positions we we're in, we dealt with some great families along the way, um, and it it's important for us to keep that relationship and that. Um, I don't know what the word is, but I guess that relationship with the communities that they're in. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the the south side of Eau Claire on the Claremont Avenue there, when we worked with the Thompson family uh, to purchase that, and, and then we remodeled it and opened it up. It was a very nervous time for us. We're changing something that had been there for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, but the support we received from the Thompson family and from the community has just been overwhelming. So yeah. we like to take that and cherish, I guess would be mm -hmm. a word, cherish that and, and not screw it up and not mess <clears> it up. <throat> Um, so that's, again, goes back to what we were just talking about our staff, I think. Yeah, I know the feeling. You know, when we decided to open a coffee shop, I honestly, I didn't really know much about coffee. And we saw a business opportunity. We wanted to be a part of the community because we've been a part of the community for a long time. But I leaned a, on a lot of people in the community. In fact, our first show was bringing some of those people in just to show appreciation. And um, But, you know, it, it takes a village. It really does. It takes a village in our families in, you know, raising kids and really in the business community. And, you know, w which is one thing I appreciate about meeting you, just meeting another business owner that's in the community doing f things for the community. And honestly, I have a lot to learn yet. So yeah, it's, it's been fun talking to you and kind of learning your journey mm -hmm. and all the things you've been involved in. So as I was um, looking through my fridge, actually, I was noticing that I have beef sticks in my refrigerator and there's this little debate in my house, like which beef sticks are we going to buy? I personally love the jalapeno cheddar. That's my absolute favorite. Um, my daughter, not so much, but what I have to know being that you're in the industry, what is your favorite product that you have or meat stick? Oh gosh. Um, I would have to be, a cheddar guy, just a straight cheddar guy. Um, not too much on the, the spice. I love our barbecue one as well. Oh. Um, so that's that's a lot of the ones that are in our fridge. Um, my my daughter, she's off the kick now, but she was on it for a long time. She was taking uh, snack sticks to school uh, for her lunch. and um, She's probably a popular girl, by the way. She was very popular. It was starting to cost me a lot of money because we were, <laughs> we were feeding the entire lunchroom, I think, uh, there for a while with snack sticks. So um, I like cheddar. Um, we do develop new ones every as we talked about earlier every winter um some of them are great uh we have a nacho cheese one right now that's great because i like cheese of mm. course to me and then we we did a camera it was chili lime or habanero chili lime and it was like disgusting <laughs> <And> so <laughs> it's um good uh good to go and try things and see what sells our we have really like top six flavors that we have in all the grocery stores around okay. here the garlic pepper jack um oh i don't know if i've tried that one that one's really good too um Mm. original of course is, is number one jalapeno is number two okay and then the cheddar the barbecue and, and on, on the line so but then we have some other ones ham and swiss we have a firecracker we just developed the dill pickle one uh, that one took us 18 months to get that right uh, we tested it a lot we gave it to some uh, staff members of course at the hardware stores and then at the uh, some customers and that one took a long time to get right but i, th I think we finally got it right now because we're selling a lot of them so and is there a dill pickle expert like how do you how do you get the right dill pickle flavor well we <laughs> Funny you ask that. Yes, uh, I won't name them on, on on air here, but yes, there's one particular customer who was uh, really particular about how it was going to taste okay. uh, because he wanted them in his bl Bloody Marys. So, Ooh. yeah, 
So, hey, we're, we're here to serve, right? Fantastic idea. Yep. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Yep. I do love me a good Bloody Mary from time to time. Yep. So. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So with all of the um, growth that you guys have had, you know, is there any time where, you know, things either went really well or maybe not so well that you just learned from and um, used to potentially do something different the next time? Oh, absolutely. I mean, every day, I think yeah. it, se it seems like, um, I think we just had a very, uh, tough summer, but learned a lot up in Rice Lake, for example. Um, Rice Lake received a grant to redo their main street. It's done now. It's beautiful. It looks good, but main street was shut down all, mm -hmm. all summer long. And, um, not only did it affect our business, it affects the employees, it affects morale, it affects yeah. all of those different things. But what I would say to answer your question, what I've learned from that is, is we developed a really strong relationship with the rest of the business community on Main Street, uh, something that we didn't have before. Um, of course, we're all business owners and we're all chamber members or, or whatever mm -hmm. group is in the t in the town that there's a Main Street association up there. And they're just such great people. And, um, you know, the chips were down for most of the summer up there. And so we were able to get together uh, as, a, as a business community. We mm -hmm. held a, a concert. Um, in our parking lot, and then we had specials. Um, uh, it, it was a it was a really nice to see other business owners and my and myself included, and our store manager mm -hmm. included, and step up and kind of help each other out, and, and also help the town out because there was a lot of negativity around. Of course, if the roads tore up for the whole summer, sure. you got to take a detour. Also, it's totally understandable, uh, but it was nice. We had a nice yeah. uh, passport program. Uh, Danielle and. Uh, um, her team there at Ignatic Brewing came up with. It was wonderful. It worked out really good. And yeah. so it was something I learned, I guess, is to make sure that we're working together. Um, of course, there's competition out there, but it's not a bad thing to work together with your fellow um, business owners. So that's one. And then probably the, the biggest, uh, the other biggest mistake we made is our, at our downtown Chippewa Falls hardware store, um, we decided to move our sporting goods to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. And it, that has worked out amazingly. That, that, that was, I'm surprised we didn't do that. You know, the first day that we owned it for how well that worked out. But we were approached by uh, a grocer uh, that wanted us to bring in some product to our meat markets and to our hardware stores, as okay. well as Ace Corporation to try something different. Mm -hmm. And me being an old old grocer, it's in your blood and you bring it in and it, it didn't work real well. Um, the The supply chain was hard at the time. Okay. Uh, when we did it, we probably picked a bad time to do it. Um, it was fun. I mean, we learned a lot, but uh, we're out of that business now and mm -hmm. uh, we have our outdoor power is in that section now with steel power equipment, all of our chainsaws and blowers and all those things. So it, it worked out fine. Um, mm -hmm. It's not like we had to, you know, liquidate everything and close the close the store. It was it was nothing like that. It was just a, we probably in hindsight should have realized that that area could have been utilized for something better, but lesson learned. Yep, lesson learned. And you take risks. You know, sometimes you just have to go with the information you have at the hand or have at the time and you take some risks you try to make the best decision and you learn from it I yeah and, and i don't mind being wrong about that i just mind yeah. we disappointed some customers in the end because we had gained uh quite a few quite a loyal following on it we we did yeah. it for uh, some time and uh, i think a year and uh, then you're disappointing them and i, and I hate that that's just we have a uh, a program at their hardware stores, and I think most people around here know about that. We deliver for free for snowblowers, um, grills, of course, mm -hmm. um, lawnmowers, anything that you can't, you know, not everybody has a truck. And um, nationwide, uh, there's a program, but it's not free with ACE. And we've, we've elected to make it for free. Um, we think it's a good program and it helps people out. And that's just what we want to do. So, you know, it's funny you say that. Um here at Kevin Coffee, we're supposed to be charging for the pup cups and the puppy lattes. I can't do it. Those little right. furry creatures that come through are just so dang cute in the first place. But um, it's just something we decided. We're like, we're not charging. I know we, I know we should be or we're supposed to be. But right. We don't. It's no, that's a good thing. It's, it's, it's local ownership and being in your community and, and knowing your customers. And, yeah. uh, you know, as we sit here, you're, you're busy. Your drive through is busy. And I, that's why. It's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it makes it puts a smile on their face, which Absolutely. I enjoy, and you know, then they get a joy of bringing their cute little animals through. So <laughs> it brings everybody joy, which right. which I love. So, did you yeah. have a story you wanted to share? Well, you know what, I've learned a lot through this process, and um, probably made a lot of mistakes throughout too. And similar to you, it's like um, you learn from them, and you know. A lot of challenging times. I mean, as you know, even getting through the whole COVID period and all of that, it's like um, I 
I think similar to you, the worst part of making a mistake is disappointing the customer. You know, there's been many times where we'll get, you know, somebody will make a comment on social media and it just, it kills you because it's like, oh man, we, we sent out the wrong drink out of a window or we accidentally like made something wrong. And, um, you know, some of those things, it's just human error. And some of those things I realized like, oh, you know what, we did not train a person on this one particular thing. And, um, you know, and then that reminds me, I need to do a better job of, of training someone the right way. So in a way, I appreciate the feedback mm -hmm. because it helps us be better people and better business owners. Um, you know, I think uh, I appreciate when people have a little grace, too, that I try to remember that when I'm going to other places and, um, you know, supporting other businesses and Absolutely. Uh, as a customer myself. But yeah, there's uh, it's an interesting road every day. Yeah, I think you do learn. And I, I think your customers and, and ours understand that if we do make a mistake, yeah. it's it was certainly wasn't done intentionally or Absolutely. or anything like that. And we, when I say we make them every day, we learn every day. We have a, a weekly call with yeah. uh, all of our managers, and um, then we get together once a month and talk about all of those certain things that we what we can do better and what we can offer more to the community and yep. and things like that. So that's I, I think we're busy all the time because we because we're looking for ways to be better. Uh, at service. Yeah. And that's something that's important to us. And going back to the staff, you know, I, I remember you telling me a story about someone recognizing one of your staff members out in public and kind of thanking them. And that's, that's the joy that I get when I come here and I see customers interacting with the staff. They know their names, like my staff knows their drinks on a lot of occasions. And it's really cool to see. And I feel like you, when I see your staff and we've seen many of them because we've visit the stores um they're just so great to work with yeah they're number one our culture and our 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 staff are the most important thing that we have going for us um but yeah it was uh that was last friday night actually i got a text message from one of them that said they were out to dinner and uh it was seven people came up to them and said thank you for the things that we're doing and how exciting certain uh announcements we've made are and yeah and things like that and it's really nice um and then at our, the, the great thing to me, our meat markets are truly a local neighborhood meat market, right? Just like you always heard about back in the day, so to speak. And, um, and it's great when customers walk in and they, they we know and they know our names. Um, and I'll give a, a huge uh, shout out to Caleb and Raven and Terry who, you know, man, man the front ends at our stores and at our, and they just, people come in and <laughs> there was one, it was funny, there was uh one day I was working at Christmas time in Eau Claire and uh, it was a regular customer that I had, I didn't know. And he walked in, he's like, well, where's Caleb and where's Raven and who are you? And I'm like, okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm here. I gave those guys a day off, you know? Um, but it was great to have a conversation with him and, and hear yeah. good feedback from from that customer about that particular uh, yeah. set of staff that we have there. So, yep, it's all that. good stuff. Now, how many locations, remind me all of your locations again? Uh, we have six hardware stores. Okay. We have two in Chippewa, two in Eau Claire. Uh, one in Rice Lake, as we talked about, and then one in Spooner. Okay. Uh, and then we have two meat markets, one in uh, Chippewa Falls and one on Claremont Avenue. And then we have our wholesale side that uh, services all the local grocery stores. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you once again for coming in today. It's always a pleasure talking to you. And um, I'm looking forward to what you come out with this summer for the meat. And uh, we'll continue to be a customer of yours. I appreciate all that you do in the community. Yeah, thanks for having me on. Appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. You bet.